Boom. Cheers, mate. Cheers, buddy boy. All right. This is, of course, the Santa Cruz Heckler SL. We've had it here at the magazine uh, for a month now. Scotty's been riding it. And I haven't even been riding it, but far out, I can definitely say what a bike. This thing is ridiculous. But today we're gonna unpack um, exactly why we think it's ridiculous, what we like about it, or what Scott likes about it, um, who it's for, and a bit of that kind of thing. We, we're gonna have the bike for a little bit longer, so we will have a full blown uh, wrap up of this bike coming um, in again a few weeks time. We just kinda wanna hit you with a report card of how we're going sort of midway through the review. Scotty, before we get into uh, how it performs though, run us through the kind of key details of this rig. Uh, as you just touched on, JT, um, we've been super impressed with this bike so far. Obviously, it's a, a Santa Cruz uh, and their reputation speak for, you know, for themselves as far as you know, quality rigs go. So uh, if you've been checking out our YouTube channel and our printed magazine uh, of late, you would have noticed we recently done uh, a review on the Heckler. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously this is the Heckler SL. And that's the bike you rode as well, isn't it? Yes, so I did a full review on the full powered e-bike version of this. And so I was super excited when uh, they sent us this one. So this bike is akin to the, their Bronson in their lineup of bikes. Uh, 160 mil uh, travel up front, 150 mil at the back. So a very aggressive trail style, trail style bike, but more, wouldn't even say enduro, wouldn't even say trail. It's very like much in between. But then of course the other thing yeah. that kind of clicks with the Bronson, we think Bronson, we think MX wheels, mullet, 27.5, 29. So this thing's exclusive mullet, right? Exclusive mullet. So the previous Heckler, you can get in a mullet option. In a mullet option. I um, done the review on the full 29er, how this is uh, MX wheel option alone. So, which is ridiculously good. So let's kind of strip this back to basics. SL, what does that stand for? Super light. Yep. This thing is light. Like you can ride it turned off. Correct. You can pick it up with one hand easily. Yep. There is no denying. I mean, yeah, it's an e-bike, but it's pretty much the same way as a regular bike. Mate, um, Ricky Boyer, um, good mate of ours, who uh, ran his uh, bike ride up the coast the other week. Uh, Blake and I took a couple of SLs up there, and for the first 10 k's of that ride, I rode this thing turned off. Wow. Well, actually, that gets us onto it. So the heart and soul, of course, of any e-bike is its motor. This is the first time we've seen this brand used by Santa Cruz. Yep. Tell us a bit about the Fazua. So in the name, Fazua Ride 60 motor, so 60 Newton meters of torque. Uh, very small, very compact, very lightweight motor. You can't even tell it's there. You can't. <laughs> like the down tube doesn't look b b bulky, but then around the bottom bracket here where the motor is actually housed. Yeah, correct. Well, that's probably one difference with uh, the Heckler and the Heckler SL is all of the battery and the motor is all slotted into the frame. So when you're looking at this thing, the amount of times people have commented and say, like, is that actually an e-bike? It actually doesn't really even look like an e-bike when you, when you, but when you look it up close, obviously you can see, you know, it's packaged in there, but very, very neat. And the motor itself, uh, a number of um, very, very neat, um, where it's integrated in the frame and uh, the little um, shifter, so to speak, for, for the motor of the Vizua. Very minimal though. Yeah, it minimal. doesn't have a big display with all your data and all that kind of stuff. It's yep. just, it's got your setting and it's got your battery and you're good to go. And that's that's the thing I like about it. I mean, some people might want something with a, a bit of a, like an interface where they can see the speed they're going, how fast they're going, or something like more akin to like the Shimano motor or even the Bosch motor or something like that as well. So, but as far as the SL motor goes, when people say, oh, you know, I don't want to go for an SL because, you know, it's, there's not enough torque, but when you look at the power to weight, it's like riding your standard e-bike in a trail setting all the time, but because it's got the, you know, lighter battery, lighter motor, lighter frame, I mean, this thing's 18 and a half kilos in mm -hmm. extra large. So- It's a light bike. And you get, even though it's a small wattage, a battery 420 watt, I believe, um, Mate, I went and did a 40k ride, 1,000 meters of elevation, no worries. Because that's the thing, it's a smaller battery, but the, the power suck or draw on the battery is less because there's less mass to move around. So it's getting a longer, so it's kind of blurring that gap between the length of ride yep. and the power, feeling of the power that yep. you have on a full power bike to these SLs. Like these things are advancing rapidly fast right now. There's a reason why the SL category is by far the biggest category or emerging category in all of e-bikes. And it's no doubt why it's so many regular riders are jumping on SLs and just being like, I'm an e-bike convert now. Correct. And uh, if, to be honest with you, I, I think the way the sort of the market's going and how the trend's going, 
Once these SLs, I think, get a, maybe even a little bit more torque and a little bit more battery life in, in these things, I mean, I, I honestly think if this is the way that's headed, everyone who is not a fan of e-bikes is gonna own one of these, okay. but also some of those more bigger powered sort of e-bikes out there on the market, you'll probably find a few of those fade away because a lot more people are gonna go to an SL. It just makes sense. It seems like it's the sort of natural progression. And as we said, that progression is definitely ramping up very, very quick right now. We're, we're lucky to have bikes like this already, but we know on the horizon, it's only gonna keep getting better. So let's talk a little bit about how the Heckler SL actually handles. We've talked about, obviously it's nice and lightweight. Yep. Um, and you say it pedals well, so the, the motor's not putting out a lot of friction there. Correct. Um, what about when you get over that 25 kilometer pedal assistance level that it's capped off in Australia, obviously? Yep. Um, a lot of e-bikes kind of fall, like you kind of fall off a cliff when you get to that bit and all of a sudden the real weight of the bike, you know, comes to the forefront and it's sort of like, oh, because it gets a lot of work all mm -hmm. of a sudden. How's this thing feel when you hit that 25? That's the thing, like you do notice like it does cut out. Um, however, actually pedaling it, it's not like a slug to pedal like with, you know, 24, 26 kilo e-bike. So you're not like lagging, a, you know, a big bike. Mm. So uh, I know some people it's a little bit off-putting um, out on the trails if you're coming into, you know, a big jump or something like that as well. And you're not sure when the power is going to gonna cut out. Mm -hmm. But this thing sort of takes that element away if that yeah, makes right. sense so you're not really that sort of part of it doesn't come in your mind because you know that you're still going to put power to the ground and the thing's still going to go and really maintain momentum really well compared to a regular e-bike that's a serious strength in itself 100 percent, mate how does this thing descend so we knew the heckler you mentioned like to get rowdy um on paper this thing's pretty similar mm -hmm. but obviously a little less weight um yep. Yeah, how does it descend? We know that it's sort of your style of trail is more on the gravity side. 100%. Like, I really like the full-blown Heckler. I love that bike. And especially for doing some big missions on. Uh, like where you're not, dayers. Yeah, where you're not sort of too concerned about battery life. Where this thing, you've got, you do have to be a bit more mindful about the battery life. Taking that away, though, for, you know, just a pure gravity junkie, especially with those MX wheels, like, it's so, like, the lack of weight in this thing is really noticeable, super nimble, um, corners like amazing. And the best way to put it is when you're hitting all those, you know, chunder, rocky sections, you're still getting that nice planted feel you get with a lot of e-bikes. However, you're getting that night, not really nice, limble, nimble, whippy sort of agile style bike sort that you get, where you get with your regular bike. Love it. So it's sort of like, it really is the best of both worlds. Now, one of the kind of design features that's a little bit different between the Heckler and the Heckler SL um, in relation to the VPP linkage is the rocker arm actually kicks back a little bit here. So yep. that didn't have that on the um, on the regular Heckler. Correct. Um, so how much does that make the rear end sort of rear wheel track different? Does it make the rear suspension work different? Uh, how's the rear end feel on this thing? Well, I mean, again, personal setups on bikes, um, you know, very much are a you know, a personal thing. Mm -hmm. I tend to set my bikes up a little bit firmer, a little bit slower, a little bit more planted than some people. However, with e-bikes, I tend to set my bike up a little bit more lively than what I do with my regular whip. Okay. But one thing I'll say with the suspension kinematics on this and similar to the big Heckler is in previous models, they had a few adverse comments in relation to its suppleness off the top, okay, yeah. where this thing is very, very nice over that light trail chatter. So all those little corners and rough sections where you're really hoping you're gonna get traction, that's the outstanding part about this linkage is the, like the way this thing tracks the ground is dynamite, it's unreal. One of the things I noticed too when we were filming clips for this out on the trail earlier today, it's really quiet. Yeah. Like you hear the tire gripping and like when it's brake, when you're under the brakes for instance. Yep. But the actual bike itself, it's not loud at all. It's it's stealthy. Like well, I mean, you, could... you punched down the hill today and then rode all the way to the top. Oh, We're yeah. out filming today and get to the get car. the car. And the first thing you said is like, man, that thing hoots up the hill, doesn't it? I was like really surprised. Yeah. Genuinely surprised. Yeah. Um, and it was pretty steep, that thing. Yeah, I mean, Like We came up out of a valley, so. Yeah, so even like when people were saying, oh, it hasn't got like back on that sort of Newton meters, mate, you, you're not really phased about it, are you? No. No, not at all. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's kind of a bit of a scratching the surface of how Scotty's found the performance of the Heckler SL so far. There's This bike is now available across uh, Australia dealer network. Um, there's plenty of different spec models and whatnot as well. 
Um, but yeah, in our full wrap up review of this bike, which will be coming in a few weeks time, we're gonna kind of dive into the various component specs, especially these reserve wheels. I know you're a big fan of them. Yep. Um, and everything else, we're gonna talk about prices and weights and everything else a bit more then. Um, but yeah, for now, it sounds like Scotty's pretty impressed with this bike, and I know I bloody am waiting for him to finish riding it so I can start ripping on it myself. <laughs> Guys, cheers for checking out our vid, cheers. and uh, stay tuned to our channel for plenty more. You.